Hello and welcome to a very good social media podcast where we try to live up to that name every single day. I'm your host, Zach Elia. Let's get into it. So on today's show, I'm very excited to have Kelsey Sweet, uh, social media strategist for the Buffalo Bills uh, on the show. Um, Kelsey is someone that I've known for a very long time. Um, you know, we have some pretty detailed conversations every now and again, just about what's going on in, in social. And, um, you know, especially when I was back in the NFL and the Bills are someone that, uh, or a team that I always look to for inspiration. Uh, it was great to be able to talk to her and the rest of the team um, just about how they do what they do and and get an inside peek at, at what we could be doing to, to kind of get to that level. So, um, you know, her journey was, um, you know, unique like everyone else's and coming from um, minor league baseball up through, you know, the NFL working in, in hockey and major league lacrosse, um, you know, having a very detailed and, and diverse background um, that really she can put on display with, with the Buffalo Bills now. Um, so, you know, I know everyone has followed their TikTok. I know everyone knows who the Buffalo Bills are. Um, so it's great to hear from someone who is inside that building and inside the mind of, um, you know, the strategy and, and the content that goes out. So, um, you know, I'm very excited to talk to her again. Uh, and I, I hope that you guys are uh, excited to listen. So um, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Kelsey Sweet to the show. Thanks for having me, Zach. Yeah, it's great. I I swear, like, I feel like we've known each other for a while, but I don't know that we've had a lot of opportunity to like sit down and talk like this. I think, yeah. you know, I was, I was trying to steal you away at one point to the pirates, but, um, <laughs> which I think was our last long conversation, but, yes. uh, but it's, it, it's cool. How's everything going? Yeah, everything's great. It's cool to see both our journeys and you've made your way to baseball, but having been, um, in the NFL together with different teams. Um, so glad to have some time to sit down and chat with you about my journey. Definitely. Well, yeah. So I think like just for some background, like the bills have always been a team that like, I always look to you guys for inspiration. And that was, you know, when I was with the Steelers, when I was with the Cardinals still to this day, it's like, there are so many different things where they go up on the bills accounts and you're just like, oh, man, I wish I would have thought of that. And so it's like, <laughs> it's, it, that was one of the, like on it, like I obviously respect and, and love to hear your opinions on different things, but it was like, that is always a big, um, you know, a big thought whenever I'm kind of getting guests and, and talking through things is like, who are the teams that really, you know, stand out to me and the ones that I kind of go through uh, on a daily basis. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we it's a total team effort. Um, we have a lot of fun all together, finding trends, coming up with trends, all different ideas, brainstorming. It's very collaborative between not only within our social media department, but across multiple departments at the Bills. So a That's team great. effort. That's it. I, I, that any place where like there is success, it's because of how many amazing people are all putting in work to it. Yes. And, and it's it's so great to hear that. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, cool. Well, yeah, I think um, I'm trying to remember. I think I met Anna and Zach, uh, members of your team back. It had to have been my first year, 2015 with the Steelers. But one of my yeah. good friends when I was uh, in college, like we would do hockey camps together in in uh, Tampa, Florida, up in Quebec City. He ended up, he was a video producer for the bill. So it was like, oh my gosh, he, like I met him. I don't know. Do you know Simon Tucky? I all? do. He okay. just got engaged. Congrats to Simon. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, Simon. But he, like him and I were, were good friends. We ran hockey camps for like four or five years together. And then it was like, I got in the NFL, he was there and he's like, well, let mm -hmm. me introduce you to everybody. And then from there, it was like, anytime I had a question, it was like, Anna, Zach, like I talked to them all the time. So it was, it, it's yeah. funny how it kind of all, all comes full circle. They're so great. And you, you know, this. like, it's one big room as far as the sports world goes, even between different leagues too, not just in the NFL. That's true. I mean, honestly, like every person that I've reached out to for advice for, you know, really anything, I mean, even for, for this, like I've, I've, you know, come in contact with so many people over the years and, you know, being in the industry for a decade, it's like you, you make these connections and anyone I've reached out to is basically like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do the show or, Hey, I'm a little busy maybe in like a couple of weeks, but yeah. it's, it's so like the, the social world is so big, but so small at the same time. Yes. And so friendly and warm. Everybody wants to uplift each other, I feel like, which is cool with our world. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely need that these these days. But yes. <laughs> um, well, cool. Well, let me I just want to open uh, open the floor for you. I just want to hear about your journey from Nazareth University 2015. I did my research uh, <laughs> all the way through, you know, Pagula Sports and now with the bill specifically. How did you get to where you are and and kind of the decisions that were made and and just open the floor to you? Cool. So I, like you said, I graduated from Nazareth University in 2015. Um, my journey in sports started when I was at Naz. I did not go into college wanting to work in sports, actually. I I really had no idea what I wanted to do. I went in undeclared. Um, I took a communications class the second semester of my freshman year and like really enjoyed it. And I was like, well, this is a marketable degree. I'll figure it out. And then ended up interning with Naz Athletics my junior year there. Um, and really enjoyed it. So I ended up interning with the minor league baseball team in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bison, so the AAA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays. Intern with them between junior and senior year of college, intern with NAS Athletics again senior year, and then um, was going to graduate from NAS and was like, all right, I guess I want to work in sports. Like, this is cool. I'm enjoying it. Um, started to focus in on social media a little bit more like towards the end of my senior year was helping the sports information director at NAS um, in my internship um, with their social media. So I had the opportunity to move to Arkansas. Um, my first question was like, where is Arkansas? Because I had no <laughs> clue. And moved to Arkansas, worked there for a year with the AA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Um, it was really cool. Baseball is Probably, I think baseball is my favorite sport. I love football, obviously, but um, baseball is my favorite sport. Grew up in a baseball family that loved baseball. My cousins played. So um, the Royals actually won the World Series that year, which was cool. And like that team that year had come up through the whole farm system. So that was just neat because like you don't see that with like a lot of teams anymore. So it was just a special organization to be a part of. I loved it. Um and was there till January of 2016, moved back to Buffalo, worked for the Bisons who I had interned with in college um, for a year and a half, um, like a season and half of another season. I was the social media and sponsorships coordinator for the team. So half my job was social media. The other half was tracking all the sponsorship assets. So that was really when social, like you started to see um more teams like taking stock in like having someone dedicated to social media that like I was the first person that was sort of like dedicated to that um that didn't have like a zillion other things on their plate in the organization so um that was an awesome opportunity I loved it and I had actually connected with someone from the state neighbors in college um and so they had seen that I'd moved back to Buffalo was working for the Bisons and Zach Specht who's our director of social media at the Bills we actually knew each other from high school um, so he had seen that I moved back too, and it was funny. It was um, during the NFL draft in April of 2017. Um, Pagula Sports was adding someone to their social media team. Zach actually hit me the night of the NFL draft, and I was at a party in the field house for the draft. And he was like, "It was one of those things where I was like, hey, I haven't chatted with you in a while. But like, not sure if you saw this position, but you should apply." And I was like, "Okay, like, I, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Like, I always love the Bills." If you ask anyone who I went to college with, like I just talked about the bills all the time, love them. <laughs> but it was, and it was never something that I was like, my dream job is to work for the Buffalo Bills. Like that, I was never like, a, this is my dream school, my dream job that I'm just like, not that sort of person, I guess. Um, but I ended up um, getting the role with Pagula Sports. I was, a, my first um, title was social media editor. So I started more heavily with the Sabres, the Buffalo Sabres, the NHL team here, and the Buffalo Bandits, the National Lacrosse League um, team here. And then um, became more integrated with the Bills like through the years and my role. My role has evolved to now I'm the social media strategist. Um, I'm just working over with the Bills now and oversee our strategy for YouTube, TikTok, all of our influencer marketing, working with influencers, creators, and overseeing our um, content strategy for cause and community-based content too. So kind of a little crazy journey. Moved to Arkansas for a hot second and then got to come back and um, now working for my hometown team. It's like pretty crazy and cool um, to be in the position with my hometown team, especially in a place like Buffalo where the Bills mean so much to the community. 
For sure. Well, yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it's crazy. Like you were talking about the, the dream job. It's, it's almost like every job, once you get it, unless it's terrible is like, that's the dream, right? Like, it's Yeah. like, I remember when I got the Steelers job and it was like, this is my dream job. And then I got the Cardinals job and I was like, this is my dream job. Yes, And now you get with the it Pirates. in it's like, Yeah. It, yeah. and it's just and you're so invested in you know the organization the team and the players and it's just like it, there's there's nothing quite like it No, for real. It's like you're integrated in a different way than maybe other um, departments are by nature of social media and what you're doing. So being so close to that and especially for me, like being from Buffalo, like it is just so cool every day. Like Sometimes like when we'll have, um, I'll have board meetings sometimes in some of the volunteer roles that I'm in, get to host them at the stadium. And then you see people who've never been on the field before, like, oh my gosh. And it reminds you like, oh, this is a normal, what I get to do every day. Like, it's a really good reminder of like, man, this is so cool. I get to like, it is a dream, like to be able to live that every day. So. Well, yeah, and it, it's always good and, and something, I mean, it's something I probably need to do more of as well, but just like you said, taking a step back and realizing, like I can look out my office window and like we're at PNC park. Like I can see home plate from where, like it's it, just to be able to, you get so busy and so in the weeds and there's so Yeah. much Yes. going on. It's like, just to take a step back and be like, Yeah. this is, this is You what have to I remind do. yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so, and it's cool. And and honestly, like, it's funny, you know, hearing about your role with, uh, with the bill specifically now, it's like, it's funny how things were so broad. And, Mm hmm you know, when I started with the Steelers, it was like, okay, you do everything. Good luck. Like whatever. And, and Bring then a it's zillion like, hats, have fun. yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so like, then it got more and more specialized and it, it kind Mm of hmm broke apart. And, you know, you have people who edit video, you have graphic designers, you have different things going on. But now it's like, it's back to the point where it's like, even if you're the social media strategist, like you said, there's still like, you list off like 10 different things of like influencers and community. And like, there's still so much within those little, not little specialized areas, but like, even though it's so specialized, there's so much that goes into it. Yeah. And all that it pours into like outside of social, just organizationally as a whole too, it's neat how it all fits together. Yeah, for sure. Well, it, it, another thing I always ask everybody and and anyone who's been in multiple positions in different sports, um, it was it was such an eye opening experience coming from football to baseball, and it was like like seven years in the NFL. It was like, yeah, like I know I know content, like I know how to do this, like I'm Yeah. I'm confident. And then you walk in the door and they're talking about international signing period and you know the the affiliates and these different things and like roster moves every single day Mm and -hmm. it was just immediately like all of the things that I took for granted in the NFL that you just knew like the back of your hand I had to relearn all over again so Yeah. I mean it take me through that like you you started with baseball went to the NFL how was that transition kind of the opposite of what I did Yeah, it was, I mean, there's a learning curve going between any sport, like you mentioned, just like the ins and outs of the schedule and um, like the the different things that you need to be tracking on social and like posting, like just it's like purely like newsworthy stuff. I think the biggest change for me was going from so many games to like I, I cut out so many games going the opposite way. Um, so it was funny when I started because I was – going and working games for Bills, Sabres, and Bandits. And I was like adding it up. I'm like, I could work every Bills, Sabres, and Bandits home and away games, and it's still less games <laughs> in the baseball season. Because like my first um, boss, when I started at Google Sports, was like, I just don't want you to get burnt out. I'm like, you don't understand. Like I would work 10 game homestands. Like I would not see my family and friends for a week. It would be like, all right, there's a homestand. I'm out. Like, see you guys next week when the team is on the road. Um, So that was like a nice adjustment coming from baseball. Um, and obviously that was a different time. That was, you know, um, seven years ago now that like teams are more built out and you have more support, but like coming where I was at the time in social media and being like the person um, and I had support there too, but like there's even more support now, I think, and uh, especially in social media departments with teams, like organizations are investing in that. So you have a better balance, um, but it was a nice transition for me to come from the baseball side to going to like football, hockey, lacrosse. It was neat. I 
I was, I was, I was a football and hockey fan. I was a lacrosse fan too, but, um, I think lacrosse was the biggest learning curve for me just to like learn the ins and outs of the game. It's sim box lacrosse is similar to ice hockey and like the pace and transition and things like that. So it's like pretty similar game. Um, but even just learning like the culture of each of the sports are all very different. Um, so like personalities of players and football versus hockey versus lacrosse, like lacrosse players, most of them have day jobs and like, hopefully it gets to a point where the league grows or like they're doing it. Like some guys are doing it full time. Um, but hopefully it gets to the point one day where that league grows and this is like sustaining people and that's their career. Um, but like guys in that league truly just play for the love of the game because they sacrifice a lot because they're away from their families every single weekend playing because they only play on the weekend. So just culturally too, seeing the differences between the leagues was really interesting to be exposed to and learn and then how that feeds into the strategy too, just because football is a lot bigger, like loud personalities, like aren't afraid to show that on social media, whereas hockey culture, like personalities, and this is thankfully like, um, I think you're seeing way more personality in hockey now, but when I started, it was like players, um, it was all about the, the like team on the front, not the name on the back. Um, and it's great that you're seeing way more personality now, but like, that was definitely a transition. Cause I think even in baseball, like there was more personality back then that you saw from players, especially in minor leagues. Um, and then as guys were like going up to the big leagues and everything like that, like that was just a different dynamic having, the farm system too. So, um, go like transitioning from that was very interesting. So yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, a lot of the, different exposure to all different sports and cultures and players and even like, um, players from different countries and everything like international players. So that was, um, had that in hockey lacrosse is primarily Canadian. So it's just, yeah, very interesting. It's cool it's, all the different exposure I had to so many different people from so many different places. For sure. And and yeah, I mean, that, that brings up a great point is like in the NFL, I think I may have worked with two, I think two guys, two players that spoke Spanish, but obviously like English was their first language. So it's mm -hmm. like coming from that to baseball yeah. where more than half of our team speaks predominantly Spanish. Yep. And like, we have a couple guys from South Korea and it's like mm -hmm. having to work through almost like translators too, is like, yep. that's a whole new world on top of, you know, the affiliates and minor leagues and stuff that you don't have in football. It's like, it, there's so much that's, it's really cool. And it's really exciting when it, it comes yes. to baseball and, and opening those doors. But it's like, it was scary at first for sure. Yeah very different but in a good way they're yeah. all like they both are like they're both beautiful games and it's just cool like how things are it's, baseball is awesome just like how guys are fed into like the major league and how, like where where guys come from and how they make their come up like and you see that in football too obviously but I think it's just it's different and it's really neat to see in baseball well yeah because I mean like the number one pick in football it's like that dude's playing in like two mm -hmm. months. He's going to be in, in a bit like in a bills uniform, like at training, like it's happening in baseball. Yes. It's like, you might not see the guy for three, four years. And you may never see him. He may be one of the top prospects and he may right. not out. It's crazy. And it's like, and so then it's, that's the challenge too, is like, how do you tell this kid's story who it's like, maybe he's mm -hmm. a, you know, a, a shortstop in high school. How do you mm -hmm. tell his story from there to when, you know, maybe he makes it into the majors in five years? Like, how do you make it? So it's not, Hey, we drafted this guy. This is who he is. And then five years later, you're like, Oh yeah. Do you remember that guy from five years ago? Here he right. is. It's like, how do you fill that gap of, you know, telling that story? Yes. We had to do a lot of that with the Sabres, um, with like prospects updates, and I didn't realize like how important it was until one day I was like, oh, I'm like, this makes sense. This is why people care about this because they want to know like where they are, where they're going and what they're going to mean to the team in the future. Like this matters. Yeah. Well, and you brought up a good point with um, working with like exposing yourself to different sports and different mm -hmm. types of players. And, and like, so take me through it. This is one thing that I've always been curious about. So like when you're with Pagula Sports and you have three different teams that you are responsible for, how do you develop strategies that are basically unique? And then how do you 
you know, how do you make the voices unique? How do you stay mm -hmm. up on like making sure you're using the right slang for the right sport? Like, yeah. how do you, <laughs> how do you mentally compartmentalize that yeah. situation? I think the seasons like football is like really kicking off in September, hockey's October, lacrosse is December. So like, although there's overlap, like the, when they were actually kicking off, like was staggered a bit. So like that helped in building the strategy, especially influencer strategy for Bills and Sabres. Um, but also looking at like how they are just differently as sports and league and like what they mean to our market too. Like the goals are different. Um, some of the goals overlap organizationally, but the goals are different as far as like what we're accomplishing with the strategy. So when I was working across all three teams, like making sure that we're continuing to go back not only to our organizational goals, but like departmental goals too, um, because what success looks like for the Bills is going to be different from the Sabres. Um, it's honest, it was honestly like one of my favorite parts of my role with Google Sports was like getting to do that. And um, it was always a cool challenge to take on of like, okay, this is what it is for the Bills. This is what it is for the Sabres and like accomplishing both of those um was really really fun so and I think it's helped me um like learn and grow so much in my career having had that experience that's really cool yeah I, I, I've always been curious of that because it's like like my brain hurts trying to figure out <laughs> like one strategy and one voice and and doing that well so it's like anyone who can do that times three is a superstar in my book. So, so it's well fun because it was different every day. And it's, I mean, it still is like, it's an NFL team. Like it's still different every day, you know, but I think to our, like our team works so well together, um, making sure those voices were different, but also like how we work together, having the same ownership, even now, even though um, our social team is like allocated to the specific teams, um, still working together on things like, hey, heads up, this influencer is coming to town. Like there's a Sabres game. If you want to connect with this person, let me know. So um, it's cool to have those relationships internally. Uh, what what does a content calendar look like when you have three di three different teams like 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 I said it it like melts my brain trying to put one thing together let alone three different ones and keeping everything organized because it's so yeah. it's so important of like you everyone always talks about like the creativity and the authenticity and all the stuff that's like of course that's so important but if you're not organized and you don't have a plan, it's like mm -hmm. none of that matters because nothing will get done. Right. Because there's so much coming at you from so many different angles, like business development, community relations, even what our like our digital team is doing, how our video team ties into that, too. Like and honestly, like you have to pick and choose sometimes like not everything is going to go out on social media like someone may be doing something super amazing but like we just can't possibly cover it all so that's a hard part of it too sometimes is figuring out like what that looks like and where it makes the most sense so we use team up um i'm not sure if you've heard of it um we use team Huge up fan. internally so it's color-coded calendar um numerous people have access like marketing has access business development um, there's someone specifically on our team at the Bills. Her name's Colleen. She's awesome. Um, she helps aggregate all the sponsored content that's coming in. So like helping make sure um, what it is, what the post is, what platforms it's going on, the handles of the partner to get tagged, linking the graphics or the video, if there's tracked links, if it's like, say it's a sweepstakes. Um, she's a superstar. She like keeps Zach and I in line, making sure everything is in there that we need, um, to make sure that we're checking those boxes and getting those like contractual elements out. Um, cause as you know, like sponsor content's really important. Um, but also collaborating like with our business development team, within our media and content team to make sure not only are we accomplishing the goals of the contract, but then like how does that translate to build social um, so that it's still engaging for our platforms and it's something that our fans want to see. Um, so there's so many like working mechanisms within all of it that all have to work together and fit. And that, that calendar really keeps us together and it's all every um, whether it's marketing or a sponsored post or just like a web story we're doing, everything's color coded and has a specific color. So we reference that like on the daily numerous times a day, like to figure out what's going out. And then we slide it in the calendar down to the time slot once it's out. 
Yeah. It, so, it, that's how we stay organized. Oh, team up. I like, I knew nothing of team up until, uh, Grace who's, uh, on our mm -hmm. team now, she came from the bills and she was like, awesome. cause we were, we were working through, you know, I had a, a calendar that I used for, like I developed in my time in Pittsburgh. I changed it a little bit when I got to Arizona, kept it going when I got back to Pittsburgh, but it was like, it was a calendar. Like it was just a Google doc that I updated, but it was something that worked for me when I was doing all of the posting whenever it was like, okay, well now Zach, you're doing 2% of the posting. We mm -hmm. need a calendar that makes sense for everybody. So it was like yeah. bringing in a whole new social team and figuring out from the ground up, like, how do we do this? And Grace and then Juliana, who's our social manager, she used it in Texas. They were both like, we've got the perfect thing. And so as soon That's as awesome. they set up team up, I was like, oh, I, I don't know how my life worked it's without amazing. this. Yeah. And I don't know. I, that's not like, I haven't talked about that a lot with like other people in like with different teams and everything, but, um, team, I'm not sure how many other people use team up, but we love it. We've used it since I started at Pagula sports. So that's, oh, that's so it's good. Great. Yeah. Shout, <laughs> shout out team up, lot. team up. If you want to be a sponsor of this show, I'm <laughs> yes. glad <laughs> you, you keep my life sane and I, I, I love you for it. Yeah, it's great. And it helps you balance too, to figure out like, even like just personally, like you, you can look at your day and know like, okay, here's all what's going out and like helps you schedule and manage your time better. Yeah. And I mean, and the way that we do it too, is like, I have my own personal kind of like, I, I think I call it more of like a social overview, but it's mm -hmm. kind of like just dates where it's like this content's going out, this content, this is happening kind of like a catch all for everything that's happening across, like you said, community, business development, yep. everything. And so me putting it there then kind of triggers a Slack message that gets sent to my team. They see that. And then we can talk about it like, okay, well, Wiz Khalifa is coming to throw out the first pitch on this day. That's on my calendar. But now we need to put together like, okay, on your team up, what does that mean? Like what content right. do we need? Work with our, our content team. Like, is it photos? Is it a carousel? What, what are we doing on TikTok? All that stuff. So yeah. it's like my calendar is kind of the first stop of just like, this is happening. And then it goes into, okay. all right, well, now what? I don't think people realize, like, you know, think like, oh, they're sending out the tweets. And that's like, there's so much that goes into just one post. Like, Wiz Khalifa, just like, Wiz Khalifa coming in throughout a first pitch. There's so much that goes into that then that you see across all the platforms and get it out to everybody. So <laughs> oh, it's, it's crazy. Well, and like, yeah. I, I forget exactly the numbers. I think it's like we have, as the Pirates, we have, there's nine different platforms that we're on. And there's like 26 different accounts that we manage across all those platforms. So it's like, and I'm <laughs> managing three different teams at the same time. I'm sure that's, that number is even crazier, but it's like knowing that it's just like, like we talked about Wiz Khalifa is coming to throw out a first pitch. Okay. Well, you go through the list of those nine platforms of like, okay, mm -hmm. maybe we don't need anything on Facebook. Maybe we don't need anything on threads, whatever it might be. But yes. like, okay, well, now that we narrowed it down to seven that we think this content will do great on, what's yeah. the content? What do we have to do? So it's like, right. that's one thing that I've, I've worked hard, you know, any of the interns that we've had or anyone younger and newer in the industry, it's like understanding how you go from here's an idea mm -hmm. to, okay, now put it out to the world and hit send. Like the steps in between there are yes. what make or break the whole thing. And how it's diversified between platforms too because like you said like maybe you're not putting Wiz throwing out a first pitch on Facebook but like there's a reason why you're not putting that there because like it may not engage very well or if you do you may have to spell it out a little bit more of like who it is and why they're throwing out a first pitch so yeah it's uh it's something else yeah um well, well you brought up uh influencers a couple different times and that is something like we I feel like it's grown a lot more over the last like four or five years where it was just like, yeah, yeah obviously let's get cool people to wear Cardinals gear, Steelers gear, or like let's get cool people to do stuff. Like, of course that's it. But I, I remember with the Steelers, I think like our strategy was just like, Oh, um, I'm trying to think of a good, like Seth Myers is going to be at the Steeler game. Well, I'll just, he'll do a selfie for us. I'll put that up and then I'll get back to work. And it's like, it's so different than, what it is now. And it's like, so <laughs> long story short and getting to my actual question is just like <laughs> the process of identifying influencers, because it's not just like go through the list of whoever has the most followers, get them a bill's hat and call it a day. It's like, right. how do you, how do you identify the right ones and and work with them? Yeah. 
So for us, it has to be really authentic because of like the Bills identity, especially as it relates to like our fans, the Bills Mafia. Um, because if someone just like shows up and is wearing a Bills hat and they're like, who is this? Like, why should we care about this person? Like you said, you can't just stick somebody in the gear and be like, they're a Bills fan. You know, you have to like work up to saying like, this person is a fan of us and like they care about this team, this city, like, and the people rallying around it all. Um, so for us, it really took off in COVID when we were like, oh my gosh, we're at home. We need to figure out ways to engage our fans. Like I, we didn't have an influencer strategy and it's something that became a part of my role by way of like starting to engage these famous fans of ours, like and big time creators of our team. Um, so identifying them, it was just initially like taking stock of like, who do we know that are like celebrities or people of influence in the community that are fans of ours that we can leverage. And then each year creating a strategy that has like bigger buckets of things that we want to accomplish, like as simple as like season kickoff gifting, like playoff gifting down to like smaller specific executions that we want to do with like very specific people. Like we played in London in October. So it was like, that was a bucket that we were like, okay, who do we, who of our influencers do we want to invite to this game and have there? And what do we want them to do? Um, and looking at it, like what um, not only is important like to us and like what we can accomplish, but like we want it to be mutually beneficial. It's important that like they're getting something out of this too. Like, um, and like we're getting exposure from other people's platforms. They're getting exposure on our platforms. Maybe we're giving them access to something they may not have otherwise had access to. And like, sometimes like we're, we may not even be posting them, but they're posting about us, but we gave them the access. They're posting about it from their platforms. They had a great experience. So they're going to post about it. So um, it's different for every single person. Sometimes it's just initially even making the connection with someone. If we hear somebody's a Bills fan and then like, have like they're in the like ether with us, I guess. And then like, we may wait until there's like something specific like that makes sense for us to do with them. Um, it's not always just like, oh my God, this famous person is a fan of us. Let's go. Like, you know, full send. Like there's got to be, whereas I think in you, in the first couple of years where I was doing it, like that's what it was. And also with it correlated with our success, right? Like people were coming out of the woodwork <laughs> that wanted to engage with the Bills, which was amazing. Um, but now there's, it's a lot more strategic how we're engaging those people and what that looks like and what not only we're getting from it, but what they're getting from it too. So um, a lot of those people, like sometimes they come through like the ticket office, they get a hold of somebody, sometimes someone internally, like from PR or like somebody from business development, maybe like, oh, this comedian is coming. She's friends with like this person. And I think she might like the bills and then it's getting them gear. And then they post about the bills when they're in town doing their um, comedy show. So they come to me through a whole different host of like places um, and then just like vetting them and going from there and figuring out what makes sense to do with them. Um, and it, at the very least, just engaging them like there is like gifting at a basic level is important and building relationships is really what it is at the end of the day, like, like making them and it's like, it's not fake, like make they are important to us as fans of our as being like being a part of Bill's Mafia. Okay, so influencers, like you, you nailed it with like, developing these relationships like it, I, I feel like buffalo and pittsburgh they're very similar fan bases mm -hmm. like across the board where it's like they can spot a phony fan yes. away. it's like like i said if it's just like some dude who has a bunch of followers and you're like here's a pirate's hat or whatever it, it's like it doesn't have that same impact of like this dude's from pittsburgh or this guy's mm -hmm. been you know a pirates fan since day one like it it like that stock is so important to to just the general fan base and and basically the people you're trying to influence, right? Yes. Yeah, it's so neat. Like it's been really cool to be able to foster those relationships. And then even people who like um Josh Richards, for example, he's a huge TikTok creator. Um, he is a fan of ours, but like hadn't publicly said it before. Like he grew up a Bills fan because of his dad. Um, so it was something where like 
the NFL connected us with him. He was going to be a creator of the week for us, but he did some stuff with us for NFL draft last year. But it was something like we had a conversation with the league and his team. Like we can't just go like full send, like Josh Richards. Like I'm like, he's got to be all in on this too. Like professing his fandom, like, and understand he has, you know, his own deals and he's going to do other stuff with the league too, because that's important to him and is part of his brand. Um, But like needed him to be like, being proactive about like expressing his fandom. Cause like you said, like Pittsburgh and Buffalo fans alike are going to see right through it. If you're not being genuine about it, which he is a, he is a true fan, but like we needed to like do some work and like strategize on the front end of it to be like, okay, this is how we're going to, this is how this is going to look to make sure people know like who he is and that he pledges his allegiance to the Buffalo Bills. (laughs) (laughs) It's such, it's, oh man, it's so funny. Like it's such a, funny thing to think of it's like yeah it makes total sense but it's like yeah it's like well you can't just like we can't just come out of nowhere and say you're a bills fan like you actually have to be <laughs> yeah. a bills fan like let's figure you have this to start out wearing the gear and some of your tiktoks <laughs> and like you know like what do you like i'll send you whatever merch you want that sort of stuff <laughs> yeah no I, but it, it makes total sense and then it's like yeah. that goes so far too with you know the influencer where it's like like you said like you're trying to not necessarily just make the relationship very transactional of like, okay, here's tickets, come out, do your thing. See you next time. It's like, you want them. And something that we've been working hard on is like, you want them as part of the family. Like when you have VIP things that happen, like making sure that they get the invite when, Mm -hmm. you know, their significant other or the family has like a new child or something like sending them a package unsolicited Mm -hmm. of like, congratulations, like different things like that, where it's instead of it being, you know, here's the hat, say these words on the cell phone bye it's like how do you make them a bigger part of like your your family so then it's like the influence continues when it's like okay well maybe they're not at your game but you know they're going to be tweeting or making videos about the game that's happening Mm -hmm. on their own time because they care like they're genuinely brought uh, bought in and care about it yes and it's like it's similar to how we build relationships with players too like you get to know them as people like you get to know who they are they're everybody's people at the end of the day like they just happen to like be really really good at a professional sport and do it for entertainment so I think like how we get to know our players as people and then like show that to our fans like you get to know like what else they like aside from their sport and who their families are, where they're from, what's important to them, what they're, what makes them tick outside of football or baseball, you know? And it's similar to influencers too. Like they may be a really famous person, but like this person is a person and like happens to be a fan of the Buffalo Bills and it's super cool. And like lots of leverage that, but also like, it is just so like relational of like, you know, checking in with them. Like, Oh, you got engaged. Like you said, you had a baby, like checking in on a personal level too, to be like, Hey, congrats. What's up? How are you doing? Even like just checking in to say hello too is like a big part of it as well. Not always just your tickets come see you later. Yeah. Well, and and like even with players too, it's uh, you always, you never want to be the person where it's like every time you're going to someone to talk to them, they're like, Oh no, like this, this dude (laughs) needs something from me. So it's, it's very much like you, you brought it up too, where it's like, we are so in it every day and you're Mm -hmm. so invested. And like, like I said, like I knew nothing about the Cardinals when I moved to Arizona, but by the time I was through like three months in, it was like, I was the most diehard Arizona Cardinals fan and loved all these players and wanted them to to succeed. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's where our job is so important is like, we need to take what we know of these guys. And cause like, like you said, they're people, like they have other interests, mm-hmm. like personalities, they're so great. But then it's like the only thing the world knows about them is once they put their helmet on and they're making play. So it's like, yeah. how do you, how do you bridge that gap of, you know, the people that we know become the people and players that, you know, your fans know. Yeah. I think something that's been really cool in my role, like the cause and community-based content, like, cause it's all like, making it conversational on social, like with our fans at the end of the day. And I think something that has been really cool, like getting players involved with like causing community-based content or like community things are they're doing in the community and like showing people that they are people like makes a difference in your strategy than when maybe you don't have such a great game. Like 
maybe there's three less people that are like commenting something not so nice after something like that happens because they remember the player, the person, not the player, the player, you know? So that like, that's like a little thing, but I think it feeds more into the bigger picture than sometimes we realize too. And it can be stuff outside of cause and community, obviously. But I think um, that's just an example of it where you like paint that picture of your players and who they are as people. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. So transitioning to kind of the next generation of creators, social managers, whoever it might be um, on their path to, you know, one day getting to where you are, what would be one thing that you wish you knew back when you started to kind of get things going for you? Yeah, I think um, this is something that I started to see more like as when even when I came back to Buffalo, just like always taking advantage of any opportunity you can to connect with anybody. And I think I did like a decent amount of that in college, but started to do it even more so when I moved back to Buffalo and was working for the Bisons. Cause like, even if it's someone in a completely different industry that you don't think relates to you, it may circle back some at some point in your career. Um, like not even just like as far as getting a job goes, but like relatedly to things you're doing in your work. Um, so just like making those connections and keeping them and keeping up with people. Um, I think that's the beauty of social media, like LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, being able to connect with people like we have, and like, you get to see what people are up to and who they are and what they're doing, um, and stay in touch with them, not only just about their career, but also like personally, like Amy Keen, who I know you're going to have on like an amazing human. And like, thanks to social media, like I get to see so much of her life and keep up with her. Um, and like, I'm not in touch with her as much as like, I would like to be on like, you know, a day-to-day basis. And I don't see her like almost ever anymore. Um, but I think that's something that I think just is so valuable in the world of social media now, like as you're getting started, the next generation is getting started in their career and like making sure you maintain those relationships and like, don't burn bridges. Like, even if it may feel like, you know, it's gonna like you rip it, rip it off and it makes you feel good in the moment. It may come back to bite you um, in the future. So I think never burning those bridges and maintaining those connections, um, especially like we said at the start, like, how small of a community especially like social media and sports is everybody's connected to everybody some way somehow so maintaining those connections and not burning those bridges is important on both ends of it for sure yeah and i mean like it it's funny the the longer i'm in the industry and and the more kind of leadership roles i have i can look back and see like I didn't really handle some things as well as I probably should have. Yeah, but we all have those things. Yeah, but it's like, we but that goes from with, it. yeah. And, and that goes yeah. with what you're saying is like, you're building these relationships. Like just know, you know, you've gotten through 100% of the things that have happened to you in this world. So like, mm-hmm. just know that no matter what it is, it's not make or break. Like it's not mm-hmm. the end of the line. Like you, you know, have to take your stand and you will like, it's always worth, and trust me, I can say this from experience, like it's worth talking it out, seeing the other person's point of view. Like like you yeah. said, like it, it all goes back at the end of the day is like, we're all people like players, influencers, us like working together, like everyone is a person and they have, you know, mm-hmm. things that they're going through outside of work or yeah. it's a view or, or, you know, um, ways of doing things that have been shaped by their experiences and their journey. So like, giving people the benefit of the doubt is something that I've been trying to do a lot better at in my more senior years, um, where it's like, you, you never know what anyone's going through on a daily basis and, and giving them that, um, you know, that grace, um, that maybe Mm. you wouldn't have in the past. Like just, that would be, you know, that's always something I go back to. Yeah. I think admitting fault to, and recognizing that like failure isn't so bad sometimes. Like I hold myself to such a high standard. This is something like Anna and I had talked about when Anna was my manager, like just like, it's okay to like fail sometimes because you learn from it then. But I think sometimes I have, I have like such a fear of failure. Right. And then like, it's okay when things don't go how you expected them to, or if you made a mistake and something didn't go the way you wanted it to, like, admitting it and talking about it and learning from it um and luckily like I've been like so blessed to have amazing managers throughout my career who have like encouraged like not encouraged making mistakes but encouraged like you know we're admitting it and working through it and not getting like 
you know, in trouble for like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's been cool to like have managers who like, um, create that space where you're able to grow. Um, and sure. flourish. Well, yeah. I mean, like if there is a, if there's a perfect person who has never made a mistake in our industry, I would <laughs> love to meet them because Me too. <laughs> I, like I, they, they are the one unicorn in this, in this industry. But yeah, it's yeah. like, that's one of my favorite quotes is I don't, I forget who I stole it from, but it was like, uh, don't be afraid to suck at something new today. Yeah. It's like you, you, it's okay to not know the answers and it's okay to try stuff. I mean, like, you know, threads became a thing in the middle of our season. And it's like, there is no, like threads doesn't know what they want the platform to be. How are we <laughs> supposed to know what to do. And it's like the yeah. only way you can learn is by trying, messing up, trying again, messing up again yes. and, and keep getting up and seeing what happens. And how the platforms, even like as new platforms are introduced, but how the platforms change so quickly too. Like sometimes you have to like rework your whole entire strategy on the fly because Meta or X or TikTok decided to like flip what the algorithm is doing. And it's like, all right, here we go. Buckle up. <sighs> We're going to put all this stock in this now. <laughs> yeah and and that's like that's the blessing and the curse of this industry is mm -hmm. like no two days are alike and that right. goes for like what's happening with your team what's going on in the world what's going yeah. on with these platforms like it's always if you are not learning and trying to keep up you're going to fall behind so yeah. fast yeah well so it so one of the big, like the biggest thing, and and it's always interesting to hear how people got into the industry because it's kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, my my journey was very similar to yours at the beginning where it's like I I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. Like I went to play hockey, and it was like I knew I wasn't going to the NHL, so I had four years to figure it out. And so, I, once I got to, I think it was my sophomore year, I had a communication class, and I was like this is amazing. Like this is the merging of the athletic side and the creative side that I love. Let's go for it. But then yeah. once, and I like that you said it was like a marketable degree because that's, yes. basi that's basically what I was trying to do was like, I need to open as many doors as possible. Cause even yeah. with this degree, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And like, yes, that's exactly just, how I felt. Yeah. And so like, so then it just kind of like, it happened and, and thank the Lord it did. But like, what would be, I guess, what would be your advice to someone like, how do you stand out in this process? How do you prepare yourself for, you know, that opportunity to get your foot in the door um, mm -hmm. as they're going through? I think showing like that you aren't afraid to do anything because I think especially, I mean, starting in minor league baseball, like I was a special events coordinator in Arkansas. I did not study hospitality. Like I was like, and I could have just like poo pooed that, you know, and been like, that's not what I want to do. But I like, my dad was like, you have your car and your stuff. Like, and thankfully, like I was like privileged enough to have the means to move to a different state 17 hours away for a role. Um, But like had the opportunity to do that. But I think standing up and asking for things that you want to. So like, even if it's not in the job description, like it's okay to ask and worst comes to worst, they say no, but like, it's not the worst thing at the end of the day out of in the grand scheme of things. So um, social media was not a part of my job description when I accepted the role in Arkansas. Um, and I asked the director of public relations who was running social, like if I could help with it. And he was like, sure. Like he was pumped. And it, <laughs> obviously you have to do all your other stuff that is a part of your day to day, like making sure that's all covered. Um, but that's really where I got like some great experience. So I think um, like looking outside the box at potential opportunities that you have, um, because too, I think some of like the best people I've worked with, like they'll like stand up and ask for like, whether it's a seat at the table or an opportunity to do something else, or even just like putting it out there to your manager, supervisor, however it may be. Um, like I want to do more of this, even if it's like a broad blanket statement or something specific, if you have something specific, um, because if you don't ask or like tell, like, this is what I want to do, like they're not, your manager's not a mind reader. So I think that's a really good thing. And like standing out when you're breaking in, like that goes a long way when you see that, especially like with interns that we have who like, like do the extra mile and like ask about like taking on more, um, and like owning things. So yeah, I no, think I, that, that really stands out. Yeah. And, and I mean, you nailed it. It's like you, you get 
no opportunity that you don't ask for, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's, you can't just as a, as a manager or a director, like in my leadership roles, like mm -hmm. any, like I barely have enough time to do my job, let alone try and figure out other things for everyone else to do. So yeah. it's like when someone comes up and is like, Hey, I had a really great idea. I'd love to do this. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, let's okay. go. Like, yeah. but it, and it goes even further into like, when you're coming up with these ideas and opportunities and what you want to do, have a plan. Because if, mm -hmm. if again, like the worst thing I could say is no, but a slightly above worst thing is if they say yes, and you have no idea yes. what the next step is. <laughs> That's like, a really good point. Yeah. So it's like, it, if you're saying, Hey, I would really love to, I'd love to take over and run our Snapchat account. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, great. What's your plan for it? If you don't have one, it's like, okay, well now yeah. go back and develop your plan and then come back and tell me again and let's see what happens. So it's like, yeah. it's always, I mean, it goes back to what we talked about with team up and planning. It's like yeah. knowing not only like, here's the big shiny idea and what I want to do, but like, mm -hmm. how do I make it happen? Cause like, yeah. even like using this podcast as an example, like this is something I've been wanting to do for five years probably, but like it was never like, okay, yeah, I want to do a podcast. Well, what about, well, I, I mean, social media. Oh, awesome. Like that's never been done. Like good idea. Like now what? So like then Building it goes it out. Into, yeah. And so being ready like, for the yes. Like if it's a manager situation, like you said, having that plan in place. Yes. Don't, don't anticipate the no, but plan, right. plan for the yes. Cause that's, yeah. that's so important. Yeah. Um. All right. So my, my last question again is, is very much directed at kind of the next generation, but how, how is, as you know, people in the industry currently, how can we make this industry better for those who are going to come after us? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, giving back, like even in something like what you're doing, like, and be, putting this information out there for people to learn, um, that want to break in or even other people within our industry, like it may be for them, but I think giving back in like, um, I get a lot of people that'll reach out like that are in college and like want to do an informational interview for a pro whether it's for a project or they're just like reaching out to connect. Um, I try to say yes to as much of that as possible because there were so many people that did that for me. And I know this isn't like groundbreaking, but um, I think that's something that's going to leave it better than we found it. Like if we continue like shepherding like the next generation in. Um, I think also like, when it comes to social media and mental health, you know, we talked about like our departments growing, um, like prioritizing that as like managers of people too, like making sure like people are taking care of people um, is really important. I think like making it a better place and setting boundaries and um, expressing like what you need, but also making it a place where people it's like an open environment where you can talk about that and, you know, um we talked about it like when you were taking your role with the pirates like what that looks like for you and your family um is really important to make sure like you're doing what's best for you like mentally too I think obviously the conversation around mental health has grown like so much over the last few years um and is really cool to see but I think continuing to drive that narrative um especially in social media because we're like on all the time and connected to so many hundreds of thousands of people um, like making sure that is a conversation that is had and is continued, um, to be had within our industry is really important. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, like, yes, social media is kind of a 24 seven gig, but, and I can speak from experience, there mm -hmm. is a way to still maintain balance yes. even with that being the case. And especially like you said, with these teams growing and, um, mm -hmm. you know, roles kind of splitting off and, and there being more specialized people, like there are opportunities where it's like, you don't have to work yourself into the ground to work in sports or in social. Like there is a way to be a person. And, you know, like I remember working with the Steelers and, and this was nothing against the Steelers. Like I loved mm -hmm. working there, but it was like, it was so early on and I, mm -hmm. I was the only social person they had. So it was like, I remember, you know, on home Saturdays was the only day that I had off during the season. So it was like, that's when I would go grocery shopping and do all my laundry. And it was like, <laughs> so I had like six days of like being a Steelers employee and one day of being Zach. Yeah. And it's like, 
And that's no, that's no way to live. And like I said, like that had nothing to do with the Steelers. That was just the job at the time. And so it's like people like us who have gone through that as Mm -hmm. we continue to move up and being these leadership positions, like we can look out for the next generation and the younger people who it's like, you don't have to do it the way I did it. Like I went through it so that you don't have to. So it's like just always being cognizant of that is important. Yeah. It's the beauty of how social has grown and how organizations are investing then in their teams um, to like the weight be evenly distributed between people and setting, like having a structure that sets you up for success, not only in what you're doing on social media, but also like as people is important. Well, and burnout is just like, it's such a, it's such a crippling thing where it's Mm -hmm. like when you're expected to be you know, creative and bring new ideas to the table. Like how creative and excited are you when you can barely keep your eyes open? Like, it's just, it's, you know, it's like any, yeah. Like, and it's, you know, it goes for any sort of, you know, art or, you know, uh, writer or anyone like that. It's like Mm -hmm. their best work is not when they're swamped and drowning in everything else. It's when they have time to sit back and enjoy what they do in their craft. So, um, so no, I, I think that's a, that's a great point. Yeah. Cool. Well, let me, uh, I want to finish up with a few different quick hitters. A lot of them are okay. pop culture. A couple of them are, are a little bit goofier, but um, answer them as quickly or as uh, slowly as you want, but okay. uh, we'll, you get started from here. Cool. What, uh, what is your least favorite industry buzzword? Oh, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I, I don't know. Like, um, I don't like subscribing to like SM sports. I don't know if that's just like, cause we've been in it for so long, but I feel like it gets a bad like rep sometimes. So, but like industry buzzword, there's so many, I can't think of a specific one right now, but I love the SM sports community. I just, I think we need a (laughs) rebrand. No, I would agree with that. (laughs) Um, Cool. What um, parks and rec or the office? The office. I love both of them. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I think I've lost, I'm a parks and rec guy. So I think I've lost every single one of these so far. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Uh, friends or Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Oh, good one. Uh, cool ranch or nacho cheese? Nacho cheese. The yes. traditional. Yeah. Uh, TikTok reels or shorts? Shorts. I would say right now. I love TikTok a lot. Reels take it or leave it for me but um shorts has been cool to set like we've been investing a lot more in our youtube um tiktok we have grown over like the course of the last four years um and i love tiktok so much but i'm excited to see where shorts go so shorts right now nice yeah a tiktok like if for some reason someone who's listening to this has not seen the Buffalo Bills TikTok, like <laughs> y- you, you have to like that's every every team that I've been at is like, how do we do what the Bills do? Like, oh we my gosh, a... that's so funny! Shout out to Kevin and James on my team. We have a lot of fun with our TikTok. It's unhinged in the best way and has been a really um, big team effort to like get the buy in internally and be able to build it to what it is now. So we have a lot, Definitely. a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Unhinged in the best way. I think that's, yeah. the, that, that's the best <laughs> description for sure. I love it. Um, X or threads. X. Google I plus. I spent a lot of time on threads. <laughs> no, it, it's, I, I'm, I'm working through it. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out just like everybody else. But yes. it's, uh, <laughs> I think if it wasn't part of like Meta's, whole suite i don't know that it would be as interesting to me as as yeah, it is but agree with you. um but we'll we'll see where it goes we will uh google plus or igtv igtv do you do you was google plus a thing when you first started i don't know if it was igtv was definitely a thing for me yes yeah. so, google but plus i like was that everything's like, real now <laughs> yeah google plus was uh it was like google's facebook basically like i remember i think it was with the steelers it may have been the speedway i think it was the steelers but we had a google plus account and it was like it was basically facebook but on google and it was so it was so weird i I don't know i'll have to ask anna and zach if they ever did for the bill i'll find (laughs) out (laughs) uh vine or myspace vine 
I th- that's the overwhelming winner. I think I never I had a MySpace. That I think that was like that's probably my generation and and older. I think at this point, but um, all right, last one. Rate the finale of Game of Thrones from one to ten. Oh my gosh! Okay, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is it's funny because Zach Speck and Anne Stoltenberg like when it was happening like real time obviously we were creating content around it but I was like I can't get they both watch I think Zach did I know Anna did but I was like I literally can't contribute to this conversation (laughs) like there were bits and pieces of it that I got like I got I got to know enough that I knew for content like what was up but um yeah haven't gotten into Game of Thrones I'm always like really late to the party with watching shows like real time usually so like I just started suits a couple of weeks ago <laughs> great show great which I'm show. like okay just gonna rip through eight seasons real quick I'm like so maybe one day I'll watch Game of Thrones yeah for sure well and and like <laughs> Game of Thrones like it always sticks out to me one because it was kind of this cultural thing like mm-hmm. um that everyone watched at the same time at the same like the same day it was so cool yeah. but like I um I was just, like I didn't watch it up I think it was like four five seasons into the show and I was like well I guess I should probably watch it like everyone's talking about it but it like yeah. it took me a while to get into it and then I was just like hooked and then I like once you got to where it was like you were invested enough to watch it like every mm-hmm. Sunday night with everybody and like look at Twitter and like see what yeah. everyone's it was like it was su- it was the closest thing to like a sporting event yes. that wasn't sports and it was yeah, it was so that's cool. so true I remember that whatever year that was that was like super hot like that like how many teams in the nfl had game of thrones related schedule release videos yep i feel like literally half of the schedule release videos that year were game of thrones based yep Um, and any and any team that won a division that had north in the title were always the kings of the north yep yeah we did that we with the Steelers. We definitely made an, a North like reference a time or two, North of the Wall, because of like snow and the stuff snow. like that. See, I yeah. knew the minimum stuff that I needed <laughs> to know. You knew it enough. True, Anna and Zach. <laughs> oh, so funny. Well, cool. Well, honestly, I can't thank you enough for this. Um, you know, everyone listening, I hope you got a lot from it. I sure did. And, um, you know, I, like we talked about, like, I hope this is an educational thing that even if you're in the industry, like just getting to sit down and hear from you with the bills is like, it, it's a really cool opportunity. So, um, can't thank you enough for doing this and, uh, and we'll see everybody next time. Mm-hmm.